The third and final authoring environment I want to show is a desktop application called OpenText Analytics Designer. This tool is for the more technical user, allowing them to not only create more sophisticated reports and dashboards, but also manage and deploy BI applications that use them. Also, designs and dashboards created in the online environments we saw earlier share the same format, so those reports can also be opened in the Analytics Designer if they need to be further enhanced. So for a quick overview here, in the very center is the layout area where I drag and drop to create and design my report. Uh, at the bottom here is a property editor so I can very quickly uh, change properties of different report elements as I click around them. In the top left here, I have a palette of items that can be dragged onto a report, including data elements, uh, labels, tables, cross tabs, charts, and gadgets, as well as custom visualizations. And behind that, we've got a data explorer where I can define all my data sources, my data sets or queries, any data models, uh, as well as any parameters or variables uh, needed for my report. And in the bottom left is our project navigator. This is where all my data objects, report designs, dashboards, and other application artifacts can be browsed. So let's create a new report. But before we do that, let's talk about the other file types that the analytics designer can create. So in addition to creating a new dashboard, a new report, or a new data object, you also see here that we create a new library or a new template. A report library contains different pieces, like a common header or logo or a chart or table that you want to use on multiple reports. When you change the item in a library, all the reports using it automatically change, saving you a lot of time. Uh, a report template, <clears throat> then, is a report designed in any stage of completion that acts as a starting point for a user. For instance, templates can include a common header, a required style or layout already applied, a common data source, etc. So we're going to create a new report. We'll call this report Spend Report. And click Next here. And here's where those templates come in. This is a list of standard templates out of the box. We've got a blank template here. We've got a simple listing, group listing, a dual column listing, dual column chart and listing, and so forth. And my first report that'll help you with wizards as you walk through the report design process. And as well as custom templates at the bottom. So if you create any custom templates, this is where they show up. For us, we're gonna create a new a blank template. So just like before in our other authoring environments, the first thing we need to do is get some data. So we'll start by selecting a new data source. Data can come from anywhere really, flat files, relational databases, big data stores, Java objects, application data, web services, virtually from anywhere. So we're gonna select a data object data source here. We'll browse and find our data object. And we've got one here called spend history that we worked with earlier. Now we've created our connection to our data source. Now we can create some data sets or queries uh, that pull our data in. So in this case, we'll select everything from our spin data and click finish. I can preview the results and make sure I'm getting the, the uh, results I'm expecting. And I can see all my data right here as well. Right now we got our data. We can start designing the report. One of the unique aspects of this designer is the web-based design metaphor, including a grid base layout. So we'll start with a grid that is uh, two columns by three rows. And I'm gonna merge the bottom two cells here to add a table. So I'll merge these. And I can add a table directly from the report palette here, report island palette. But we can also go back to our data explorer and drag our data set and get a table full of data already. So we'll select all, then pull the fields off we don't want, and click OK. All right, so I'm gonna merge the next two cells as well. Um, let's merge these middle two cells and uh, add a chart. So back to our palette, uh, drag a chart. A WYSIWYG uh, chart builder helps us visualize a chart as you make changes. So we'll leave it on a bar chart here, but I can select all uh, different types of bar charts and different subtypes as well. Um, we'll select next uh, to grab the data. So we'll select uh, data from our data set and uh, for the category x-axis, we'll pull our spin category up here. And for the series, we're gonna take the amount and leave it on sum. So we'll sum up the amount here. Uh, let's go um, to format this. We can apply a theme here. Let's uh, uh, do the clean blue theme. And uh, for a title, uh, let's call this spin by category. All right, we'll click finish. And now we've got a, a chart in here added. All right, I can add an image to this report now. And images can come from a URL, from a shared resource, or embedded 
uh, in the report here or be created dynamically. We're going to use a logo we've got here. And let's add a label as well. And we'll just call this one spend report. All right, this report can be previewed in the web viewer with pagination and toolbars, uh, or as a Word doc, as HTML or PDF, PostScript, uh, PowerPoint, or even a, as Excel. Uh, we're going to run it in the web viewer. And the report viewer here is interactive. So uh, we'll talk about that in the next video. So tune in uh, for the next video, Consuming BI. We're we'll talking about all the cool things the user uh, can do interacting with this report. Once my report is complete, I can simply publish that by selecting publish from the menu. All right, this has been a quick look at the different BI authoring environments of Magellan BI and reporting.